In one of my previous videos, I was discussing how to get uh, more analog inputs on an ESP8266, and I've got still the project here that I built for it. But there were some questions left unanswered. There was a chap, Daniel Johnson, who came onto YouTube and said he managed to do this with just two resistors. But there were also some other things that are worth exploring. You have one additional transistor and you can use one GPIO to toggle both. And does that mean also, if I add another set of transistors, I can multiplex four output inputs? I'm sure I can. Uh, that might make too many inputs for it to be sensible. Or maybe I need to put something like some jelly bean logic Finally, we might see if we can get this ESP sending data to one of the Raspberry Pi based robots over there and see if we can drive it with that thumb wheel joystick. Here was the original board, the Lolin or Node MCU board, which is in the SP8266 mounted with breakouts, connected to two transistors, NPM type. The bases of those are controlled by two of the digital pins. The output of those, the emitters, connected together and going to the one analog input. This joystick, made of two potentiometers, connected together, and as you move it, the analog goes to the two transistors. And depending on which transistor is turned on, then the analog signal is able to get through to the node MCU. So Daniel Johnson's experiment is that he can do this using two resistors. I have two resistors that should be close enough to identical. Each of these resistors has one side wired to a GPIO pin and gets pulled down. We'll connect the ends of the two resistors together. Joystick. Ground voltage. This is the one pin from here to data pins. I'm going to start by taking, which is the original code we wrote in the previous video. When we initialize this, one pin is floating, one pin is low. So he's switching the one he wants to float to an input pin. GPIO.mode read x input. GPIO.mode read x to gpio.output low, back to input, read y, output low, read y. Now he has some interesting stuff about how he's calibrating. And if I move the stick, the y is kind of affecting the x. The x is affecting the y. I just want to check that I'm not getting any heat on the board. No, 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 that's good. Ever so slightly paranoid about such things. 9.9. .9. Okay, that's close enough to 10. This one out, that's 9.8, which, okay, close enough to 10, not perfectly matched with the other, but yeah, it's within some tolerance, I suppose. 9.83, so they're not exact 10Ks, they're close to, what's going on on these pins then? Drop this down to 50 milliseconds, and now we have something. That mode is then, if it's input, it's gonna be driven almost entirely by the stick. Then briefly here, we go output low, read the button, whatever's on the joystick, then we go back into input. So why from input there is it being driven that way? Other pin, finding almost exactly the same waveform. I get two of them, one for each pin. What happens if I then vary the stick? So one direction that way, oh look, okay. That makes one of them disappear. That kind of makes the other disappear. If I then pull it up, it affects those in ways it probably shouldn't. And I suppose what I don't really get is if I'm kind of going from, as the code says, input to output driven low. See, there might be a timing factor in that, in that right there. And that might be what's playing out on the scope here. I've made my code look a bit more like Daniel Johnson's code, just rearranging a couple of things the other way up. Changed my board slightly to make sure I've got this resistor going down to ground. Therefore, this is where my analog input is. Those are the two digital outputs that are controlling it. And before I probe, if I pull a joystick down, then one of the axes goes down, other axes goes down. Both axes go up, but I've only pulled one up, and the same this way. I spoke to Daniel Johnson, who suggested adding another resistor between the positive voltage and the joystick. Testing this, it looks better, but there's still some crossover between the axes. It's far more controlled though. Perhaps with the right angle of the tongue, the right calculations, and the correct resistor, it would work perfectly. 
It's clearly a simpler bill of materials and would be less board space than using the transistors, but just seems a bit fiddlier. Clearly both styles have their merits, and now we have one other method to multiplex inputs. Thanks Daniel Johnson, it's been fun to replicate your experiment. So the next circuit I'm going to attempt is using one additional transistor of the same kind and seeing if I can then use one GPIO pin. Now can it be done with just one more transistor? Exploring the three transistors and one IO pin in circuit JS. Um, so we've got our same two joystick inputs as we did on the first circuit we saw in the previous video. However, instead of there being a switch here, I've got this thing here. This represents a knot. So whatever's coming in here will be inverted out here. So if I, at the moment it's all turned off and therefore we're actually getting this signal because this here is turned on. So nothing there, we get something here. That's because at the moment we're getting 3 volts through this 10k resistor down here turning on this transistor, so we're getting joystick Y. If I turn this on, that actually turns on this transistor and that actually allows this to go down to ground. So that pulls this low which turns this transistor off. So we're no longer getting output in this transistor, but that's also turned this transistor here on. So now we're getting whatever joystick X is, I've stuck in a 150 hertz signal generator just to help us uh, understand where it's coming from uh, and that's allowing the signal here into the analog input instead so you can see only one of the actual output transistors is on at a time and this transistor here is acting as a knot whatever's coming in here we are getting the opposite through this transistor well it's this transistor plus this pull up to the high rail and it's being pulled low by that transistor at this junction here. That's what keeps this low which keeps this turned off. So here is the three transistor one IO pin circuit. So you've got the node MCU, you've got the three transistors where two of them have their bases connected to this pin 5. So pin 5 turns on both these two transistors. One of those uh, allows through one of the axes of the joystick the other pulls the base of this low so it turns off the other axis of the joystick when this pin is low however this joystick this deactivates so we don't get the input from one of the pins this transistor deactivates that allows this to be pulled high by this resistor which then turns on that transistor which allows that pin uh, which is the other axis through to the analog output uh, which is this one over here. The blue is analog output, the green is the um, digital input. So first just make sure I do my temperature test, nothing's shorted, nothing's hot. So I've gone and adapted my thing yet again to one read XY pin uh, because this is connected to pin 5 here and that's only going to be set up as output pulled low and to read one pin, we pull it high. To read the other pin, we pull it low. And then we just do two reads and then we output what we've got. And we'll send this to the ESP. We'll save this code to the ESP for it to run and make any sense. We're getting some kind of reading. So let's pull one of these. Uh, nothing from the joystick. Oh, look, that's affecting both. Oh, okay. Time to debug this circuit. I've had time to sleep on that. Now, Something you'll find in engineering is sometimes if you sleep on it, the real answer presents itself before needing to get out of scope and do lots of analysis. And I've been bitten twice by the same problem. The problem here, as it was, is a two for two, is that these three transistors are all the wrong way up again. So if I actually put them up and turn them around, making sure not to displace the pins, as in keeping the pins in the same places but the other way round, then I should get the expected behaviour. I've turned the scope on and I've slightly changed the code so it's every 100 milliseconds instead of every 500. And uh, if you look at the scope, you can see this tiny little dot that's flicking around here. That is when I'm actually pushing this high to read that pin. So. For the majority of the time it's low, but there's this one tiny moment. Turn on the second channel perhaps and see if we can sync it up with the first. Got the second channel. And we'll put it the same. Oh, two volts as well. 
And now I should be able to ground that. And hold on, if I just bring the channel two position. There we are. So we've also got a similar spike there. Now that's just the same pin, so that's okay. But then I should see inverse on this pin here. There we are. Okay, so you can see if I bring the channel two position up, it's held high and it's being pulled low at the same moment there. It's the output pin from the sp 866 This is the opposite one where it's being held high and pulled low by that other transistor. You can see they're happening at exactly the same time. Now as it happens, after I reseated all the transistors, everything just works and I am getting the right numbers. So you can see here, if I start moving the stick, I get an X, which is separate from a Y. If I do one of the diagonals, we get zero, zero. The other one, we get 900. And if I go to this diagonal, there we go. So we're getting a fair variance in all the values. And that means we're using one output IO pin on the ESP8266 to read two analog inputs from this joystick. I think this is quite neat being able to visualize this here. As I said, I had to reduce the time base on the code from 500 milliseconds to 100. Now I'm gonna flood this output, but if I drop this down even further to 50, it should make for an even better capture on the scope. So let's just give that a go. Now we're gonna be driven here where it's gonna be slightly slower and you can see a randomization there because we are outputting text and outputting text does make things slower. So I've kind of made some tweaks, tweaks to the scope. Let's get a much clearer probe. So now you can see it's triggering nicely. So you can see again, if channel one is going to our IO pin coming in, channel two is going to the other, you can see the inversion happening here between the two signals. Uh, so you can see it's triggered nicely on that 50 millisecond pulse. Uh, um, there might be some variance, but this is actually taking it out for me. We've got our cursors there, so we can actually see where that pulse is. 740 nanoseconds, huh? That's how long that pulse between going uh, high and low on the GPIO actually lasts. Uh, that's rather fun. Um, I wonder if we can do a vertical cursor. Let's see if I can do a measurement from channel one. It should be quite close to 3.3 volts, 3.26, there we are. And here I'm probing on the output, and if you can see, if I move one stick, you can see that stick is affecting when that pin is low. If I move the other stick, you can see that's affecting when that pin is high, or when that output is high. I suppose this is actually the opposite way around because of that inverter. Now notice that both are affected here. And notice that what's left there is the other other stick axis. Oh, well we're kind of messing with triggering slightly, but I should be able to make that line go down. Just to make that go up, but not down. But that might be because when I go down, we lose triggering. Maybe I can trigger on channel two. Trigger two. Okay, take that off. We're triggering on two. Uh, and actually for this we want to go triggering negative trigger two going there perfect that's it that's the one sweet so now we should be able to see now i notice there's much more variance in one direction than the other so that would mean we need some calibration because the x and y aren't quite the same and then if i move the other axis Get that, and obviously we can uh, have all kinds. Of... But notice channel two's digital then suggests that the high voltage is being brought low and high by resistance here. So it may suggest that some of my other resistors, which I've kind of set up to cut or decouple some things, are not doing so. So maybe they're too low, and they're actually called, there's actually current flowing where I really don't want to. VCC here is actually being affected by the movement of the joystick. Uh, so I probably need some bigger resistors if I was to make this circuit perfect. It will do for now because the readings I'm getting from it are re relatively sane, but uh, clearly there are some flaws there. So that was a fun little foray into seeing the scope recording what was going on on this board.
So we still have some parting ideas of where I could perhaps drive a robot just using the joystick, which would be fun. Or even teaching kids to do stuff with banks where I could perhaps link banks with the ESP and then have the ESP drive a scratch game on a Raspberry Pi. I mean, that would be kind of awesome and fun. I reckon you could get more inputs, like I suggested, where you'd multiplex up, but I think you'd start multiplying the number of transistors you have. And I suspect at that point, it'd be cheaper and simpler just to use a 328. So for one or two extra inputs, maybe. For many extra inputs, I think you'd probably find the costs and benefits start to really play against each other. Now, I'm going to ask again if the community are happy to do uh, transcripts and translations. I'll put a link below. Every time you do this, it helps other viewers so they can actually read what I'm saying if they can't hear it or if it's not clear. And it will also help viewers speaking different languages gain more access to my videos. So if you can help, please do. It's much appreciated. Please leave comments below with more suggestions and ideas. Uh, if there's anything you think I've done, you know, could do a bit better. I, I'm aware that my uh, oscilloscope skills probably leave a lot to be desired. So anything you think I could do better or anything you want to ask, if you want to find out more about this or if the information in the description isn't quite enough for you to be able to reproduce the experiments, please let me a, leave me a comment and ask. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it and uh, subscribe for more, more videos with robots, with ESP8266 and with me tinkering with electronics and code in general. And goodbye and go and make awesome stuff.